sorry. There you go. Here? Go ahead. Yes, okay. that's better. Through the chair. Um, it is a Class B estimate, uh, which will be refined through the development of construction drawings and tender packages. Once, once things are tendered, then we will have a better idea of, of exact costs. The reason that there's a difference in the contingency amount between the as-is replacement versus the redesign um, option is there's more known conditions in the as-is rehabilitation project. Uh, the, ad, or the redesign project requires us to redesign and relocate some components, so we've put in a, a higher contingency. Yeah, I'm surprised to see that because there has been a, a lot of work done on that project already, investigation, and they still see you sitting there with a, with a, a contingency of close to $2 million out of that $8 million project. So. The, um, thank you. Um, I, I sh sorry, I'm sorry, I should, can that project uh, be delayed? Uh, through the uh, chair. When is, when is the time, the funding here is, is spread over four years. Uh, when is that project going to be completed? Or when, when is it, when's the work going to be done? Through the chair, the majority of work will be done between 2020 and 2022. So is, is it a three-year project? It's not something that you would do all in, in one year? Through the chair, it is uh, virtually impossible, uh, just given weather, weather conditions, to do it all in one year. But two years? It, the majority through the chair will be completed in two years. There will be some uh, hmm. on the Duke Street and College Street side on the third year. So what's the best case scenario as if, if one were wanting to postpone it? What is the, the best that one could expect? Through the chair, this essentially will be a four-year project. 2019 will be spent uh, hiring a consultant to lead us through the development of construction drawings and tender packages. The project will be tendered out towards the end of 2019. Uh, the project then will start in March of 2020. Um, professional opinion, I wouldn't delay the critical infrastructure any longer. And the critical infrastructure, if you recall, is the concrete surface. It's the parking membrane. It's the drainage. And even in it, as it sits today, the skating feature and the water feature have to have uh, infrastructure replacements. So you can't drag it out for a couple of years? Through the chair, I, I didn't understand your comment. But I say, I'm sorry, you can't, uh, there's no possibility that it can be uh, extended for a couple of years. Through the chair, this is a really complex project and, and if we look at all four sides of the building, have parking membrane that uh, extends beyond the building and it would be really difficult to put it, to chop it up into um, more phases of a project. We would really jeopardize mm -hmm. that membrane replacement. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I have some more questions. Then. Go ahead. On C87 and C160, security assessment, what, what is that all about? Another, it's $150,000 that we're gonna spend. We're, where did, where was, where has that been discussed? Ms. McGoldrick? So through you, Chair Davey, um, the security assessment is to um, assess uh, the physical spaces within City Hall. So that's to undertake both um, the risk assessment of um, public access spaces in City Hall and then to look at implementing um, high priority recommendations coming through that assessment. Have we had a lot of problems with this area? So we have seen a significant increase in security inc incidents across um, facilities across the city. And in fact, we have seen an increase in security um, risks at City Hall as well. Can you give me a, an example? Uh, well, a recent um, last quarter of 2018 example was where um, a member of the public accessed a staff space 
and proceeded to um, take items out of an office. Take what I uh, to take items out of an office, and in fact, when that um, person was apprehended, had a knife on them. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, just yeah. Before we continue, just like to remind uh, members of the committee as well that this is obviously this meeting is recorded. So just um, if you're talking about not that we've crossed any lines, but just if you're if you say anything with respect to liability, just keep that in mind in terms of your comments. Okay. Uh, Councillor Marsh. Yeah, I just want to follow up on some of the comments that have been made about potentially delaying our City Hall outdoor spaces rehabilitation. And I'm just, I just want to remind Council that uh, even though the wording in the uh, background of our issue paper on C-185 is soft, where it says that we received these reports, as, as far as I recall, we, re we approved that master plan. And, uh, and it doesn't take much, you just when we're downstairs parking in the underground parking garage, we see the buckets. The, the roof is already compromised. It's time, uh, it's this past time for us to do something about that. And I can appreciate uh, where some of my colleagues are coming from and wondering how on earth did we come up with, um, with this money in, in, in a short order of time. But I... I, I think it's one of those things that uh, we just we we have to do it. It's not fun to spend money on uh, redoing a parking garage, uh, although some might find it fun. Uh, no, no offense to meant, but uh, I it it is uh, also something that I, I'd like us to to just um, make sure that we know that if we don't do it now, then we are putting our parking garage uh, at risk and, 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 and down the road it, it could even lead to uh, human safety and, and, and so I think that's something we, we can't mess around with. Uh, I also just want to ask staff if it would be uh, onerous or if it would be easy to to give us a few numbers about uh, when we when we redo the, the um, City Hall open spaces uh, and we we uh, retrofit for uh, some of the lighting to become LED, uh, and uh, when we have a more user-friendly uh, rink and water feature that can be drained more easily and, and set up more easily, are we? Uh, what are the operational dollars that we're going to be saving year to year? And I'm just, I'd love to to know if it'd be easy for us to to get some of those numbers before final budget day. Who could speak to that? And I don't want to ask, I mean, we've asked for a lot of information, so right. if it is too onerous, I understand. I just, I think it's implied that we do, we are going to see some significant operational <coughs> savings uh, going forward. Yeah, I do remember a line in the original report <coughs> saying about the, how difficult it is to transition. Ms. McGoldrick? Yeah, so through you, Chair Davey, um, we'll look to see what analysis we could do prior to final budget day. Um, we may have, based on some recent work um, related to the corporate uh, climate adaptation plan, um, additional information related to energy efficiency and cost savings. Um, but we'll look to see what we could pull together for final budget day. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry. Through Ms. the chair, we also can provide, we have summarized some of the sustainability aspects of the project, so that might be something that uh, Although we might not be able to quantify something, um, it's, right. it's sort of that anecdotal improvement. Yeah, that's fair. And, okay. uh, and again, please don't um, bend over backwards. I know a lot of information is already in the two reports already written, but, uh, and we'll have those in front of us, so that'll be fine. But, uh, but a, a few additional numbers would be helpful. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Rabinovich. Yeah, just uh, briefly on the City Hall outdoor spaces. Um, you know, and, and I too understand um, the, the questions uh, around this, and I think it's appropriate because it is a significant amount of money. Um, but I think we also need to remember that historically this council, at, at times when we've had major challenges um, to deal with, um, our very capable and professional staff have done what we expect them to do, and that is look for solutions within um, the envelope, the funding envelopes that they have available to them to try to find solutions that are, that are sustainable and don't put our, 
our um, long-term financial standing into jeopardy. Um, there is no doubt in my mind, and I'm, I'm glad to see that the reports are being uh, recirculated, um, and perhaps the new councillors should also be, uh, sh should have shared with them any of the uh, in-camera material uh, re regarding uh, things like liabilities and so on, uh, because we don't want to talk about that here. But um, I, I think it's in incredibly uh, important that we move forward with this and move forward it, with it in a timely manner. I mean, this this city hall is the um, is the heart of our community. It literally has tens of thousands of people who are here, um, you know, every month, year, uh, in terms of the the activities and the business activities that go on here. And uh, quite frankly, it uh, it's in a condition that um, it has has waited beyond an acceptable period of time, in uh, in my view. And I think the reports last year uh, indicated that. And uh, I think, as we're hearing from staff, and as we've witnessed ourselves, um, it will only put this the. Um, well, it will only result in the cost going up significantly uh, if we don't uh, deal with it in a, in a timely manner. Thank you, Councillor Gazzola. I'm going forward. Uh, well, I've, I've, nope. got, I've got a question on C90. Okay, just hold on for one second. I just want to just one quick question finally because I don't completely recall. But so Council did approve this, but there was feedback that went as well so all of the feedback that council provided is incorporated in the plan for the city hall outdoor space because I, I don't recall the final like design or something or something is anything coming back to us i guess i should ask ms goldberg so when the um, concept plan was brought forward to uh, council last december um, council directed staff to proceed with um, the additional analysis uh, design work and costing of the full Im implementation but requested that staff break out the essential items so those replacement items from the um, the enhanced or the redesign elements which is what you see in the capital issue paper okay i see and items like the, like I recall, a personal pet peeve of mine was the, the ice rink at one point. There was a suggestion it was some like trapezoid shape instead of being rectangular. Like all those sorts of items have been resolved. Ms. McGoldrick. So from what I understand, um, yes, the different configurations were um, looked at okay. and uh, based on the site uh, constraints. Um, and I understand that there's some elevation challenges. Um, the design that's being put forth is what's feasible for the space. So assuming we prove this at budget, the next thing that we will see would be the tender, or tenders. Is that correct? OK, thank you. Uh, let's see, if there's no more questions there. Councillor Gazzola, let's see, let's find where we are here. Okay, so we're moving along to, we're going to do 162 to 165 utilities. Councilor Gazzola, when you're ready. Did you just say to, I thought you were going right to the end. I what? want, I, mine is on 166. Uh, no, I think I broke it out this way in a reason, for a reason. Let's see. I'm not seeing anyone clue. Um, queuing in, so we could just go to the end, I suppose. Yeah, let's just go to the end then. So that takes us straight through to 172. Uh, Councillor Gazzola, when you're ready. Okay, I, I'd like to get, see if I can get a, a quick recap on the Iron Horse Trail. I remember there was a project brought to the city where there were, it was a humong, a, a large, very large project that was divided into three parts. A, or north, south, and middle, or something. And I thought at the time, I thought, I was trying to figure out, was part of that three-part plan, did we do the work on part of it, or? So we were looking for the complete oral history of the Iron Horse Trail. If well, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just looking at what's transpired, what, 
And then, and then I thought we got, there was, there was a big uh, grant and then the grant was pulled back by, by the new government. So, so, so going back to Mike, there w it was divided into three parts. I thought, I, I thought the southern part was done. Is that not the case? Okay, so through you, um, Chair Davey, the, you're correct. The um, Iron Horse Trail uh, length was divided into the north, central, and south sections. Uh, the central section um, was completed. The construction was done the this year. Section. Correct. Um, and then uh, what's, what was funded, I believe it was last year through the capital budget process, was the north and the south section with the seven, um, the seven hundred thousand um, dollar grant allocation for lighting. Um, that seven hundred thousand is no longer available to us through the province, and that's what is identified through the issue paper. But, but was the, the the remainder of the south and the north? Plus lighting, was that all approved last year? That is correct, yes. And so was any of that done last year? So that was phased in terms of design in, in um, 2018 and construction in 2019. So the, the work, the construction work for the north and the south has not been completed, but we're right into the detailed design and um, looking to tender in the first quarter of um, 20. So with the funding that we now have on 166, does that complete doing everything that we were planning to do on the Iron Horse Trail? The whole length of it. That is correct. It, 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 it widens it and it, it lights it all from one end to the other. That is correct. Everybody's pleased with that? That's, I didn't realize that's what we were doing. And so, and we're trying to make up for the 700000 that the province cut from us. That is correct. Uh, uh, is it, a, uh, is it a necessity? Are we planning to do this in 2019? Is it a necessity in view of the province cutting back that uh, it be done in 2019? Can part of it be done in 2020? So, so through you, Chair, we know this is the highest used um, commuter trail corridor in the city. Um, of course, the funding timing is always up to the discretion of council, but um, we have a portion of the trail that's been completed, and uh, which is kind of right in the, the center of the trail uh, corridor, and then um, two adjacent pieces that aren't to the um, central section standards. Um, and so there is a bit of a discontinuous um, design element to the trail currently. So it's now, it's become... It has also become a number one priority for the city. That's for us to decide, Councillor Gazzola. You no, know, that's all. I don't know. Is that my question? Well, the staff's put it here because they, they believe that. Pardon? Staff's put it here, obviously, because they've, they've yeah. identified it as a priority of council. Yeah, it's for I, us to I, approve or disapprove. I do want to point those out because it is an all, it's all a question of priorities, and we need to indicate what's the number one priority. It, it is somewhat of a, a lacking thing in that we don't really see, as we look at all these pages, you know, what's the number one priority, what's the number nine priority? So I try to bring out the question as to what is the number one uh, priority. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor gallery Seelock. Yeah, I actually uh, had a question on 163 with regards to water. Um, I just wanted to know a little bit more about the funding that's going towards Ottawa Street from Fisher Hallman to Tressler Road. It's on page C163, At the, very the last one. Uh, through you, your chair, uh, in terms of the funding? Yes, yeah, so there's $175,000 over two years. I'm just wondering what 
um, specifically is at the tail end of what the project's going on right now or uh, no it's a through you chair it's extension of the water main so it's going to be we spread the cost over two years the, the, the region's doing the project and we're going to be upgrading the water main okay so that work's being done right now though right um, it will be that's correct okay okay i just wanted to make sure because that project's taking a really long time but i know it's a regional project so um, anyways uh, that's all my questions on that one. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. Thank you. Um, I have more questions on other pages, though. It's on other pages? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're doing the rest. Um, I'm going to start with the um, 167, and it's with regards to parks and cemeteries. And my question is, um, how come we have a separate section for downtown parkettes as opposed to, like, neighbor harp? Why aren't they grouped in with neighborhood park rehab? So through you, uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, I'm probably not the right person to give you the full background, but I understand that we split that out several years ago um, as, as actually, I think it followed from instruction given from, from the horseshoe uh, to look at that. And it is going to be something we're going to be looking at next year, so you'll be seeing a different, hopefully seeing a, a slightly different makeup. We split it out really to reflect what we were doing in each individual area, and so I, I'm, I'm keen to keen to build our budgets in a slightly more open and transparent way than the way they're currently laid out, where <coughs> we're doing small little pots in different areas. So watch this space. It's just concerning uh, that it has its own line item when all park it should be of same priority. Um, my other question is with regards to the Huron Natural Area Redevelopment on page 169, and I'm just wondering where we're at with um, the update to the master plan for the Huron Natural Area, um, because I've been asking for that for a little while now. Uh, so through you, Mr. Chair, um, we have the great opportunity having a new team, a new division, parks and cemeteries, to take a look at these sorts of things. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited to uh, be hoping to bring before you uh, at some point later on this year the idea of doing uh, an open space strategy or something of that ilk, uh, probably with a 2020 timeline. And that would be looking at uh, the way in which we undertake master planning across all of our parks, neighborhood parks, downtown parkettes, and indeed our major parks such as Huron Natural Area. Do we have anything that just from the, I'm speaking just to the Huron Natural Area Master Plan, that like can show the implementation and the check marks of what we've completed and what we, we haven't completed? Is that something that's easy enough to do or is that a big body of work? It doesn't have to be done for a final budget day, but I'm just. That last statement makes it significantly easier to do <laughs> and I'd be delighted to provide that for you. Okay, thank you. That's all my questions. Thank you, Councillor Singh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Councilor Galloway Seelock did touch on um, the neighborhood parks um, or why the division between the center and citywide. Um, I'm glad to see that there is more body of work that's going to be in process in 2019. Um, it, this year, though, uh, still trying to focus because in my mind that is still a priority. Um, in the neighborhood park rehabilitation of what's being budgeted there, how many parks does that allow? To be rehabilitated. Uh, so the the numbers that are in there would provide for it depends on the nature of the sorry through you Mr Chair it would depend on the uh, the nature of the rehabilitation that we're we're wanting to achieve. In this particular instance, uh, those monies are are um, being allocated to supporting the participatory budget uh, participatory budget parks um, being put forward this year. Do we have a certain number that we try to achieve uh, yeah. a year for rehabilitation? In not in terms of the rehabilitation. It's, it's more of a, a, on an as-needed basis, but again, I am very keen to bring back a, a more robust list of sort of a 10-year capital program for our neighborhood park rehabilitations. So what timeline was that? Um, my hope um, is to work on that. I'm going to look at my GM in terms of my, my workload, but my hope is to certainly make progress on that for our 2020 budget cycle, so for midway through this year. And I've had some conversations with Ms. McMorgan about uh, some deficits there with uh, neighborhood parks and I would like to see uh, some greater investment in that area. Um, on community gardens, on the 10,000 that's uh, allocated year over year, is that just how many uh, community gardens is that? Is that just uh, maintenance or new community gardens funding here? 
So, the, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the, the funding line that's in the capital budget is for new community gardens. Um, we recognise again that this is an insufficient amount to achieve one. Um, we budget between about 20 and 30,000 to achieve a single community garden. Again, it's very dependent on the nature of the community garden. If it has a water supply uh, nearby, that significantly impacts the cost. Um, uh, but we, again, another line that we'd be looking at through the, the open space strategy to make, uh, make a, greater, uh, a greater story behind. So, this allows only for one use? say yes. one a year. Um, could I request for an issue paper out of capital that uh, staff bring back in support of a increase uh, to two community gardens per year as opposed to one that's Mr. May, you want to comment on that? Through you, Mr. Chair, I believe in 2018, Council approved a new community garden program which had a full financial model behind it. So my request to you would be instead of an issue paper, why don't we recirculate that report to you and you can look at the financial model there. And because it's the actually, if I understand, I believe it's we're now committed to bringing on two or three uh, new community, or, uh, yeah, community gardens every year, and uh, and there was a funding model behind that. Okay, please, if you could recirculate, that's great. Thank you. And the other area is NC 168 for McLennan Park. Um, now there's a, a one seems to be greater one-time infusion in 2019. Is that carry on with some of the remediation work that was done, or, or is it completed, or is this some additional infrastructure that's being uh, anticipated for the park? Through you, Mr. Chair, the remediation work which has been completed to the Great Lawn, um, that is more or less now done. There's a couple of minor pieces to be done this spring, um, but the funding for that piece is all complete. This is uh, new works. This is to do with some drainage works we want to achieve this year, and it also helps to address the uh, the, the issue of the, the washroom uh, and the, the ramping that needs to be done to access the washroom. There's a bit of a step beginning to form there, and, uh, and we want to address that. Um, uh, how, when was the last time the uh, either master plan or uh, the overall uh, plan for the park, uh, long term uh, plan for the park was updated? 2010? Is, is it a refresh that's anticipated? Um, so through you, Chair David, I'd have to double check um, the timing. For some reason, I, I believe perhaps the master plan was from 2008 to 2010, but I, I'll need to double check that. Um, and in terms of plans to refresh that master plan, again, as Niall had mentioned, the open space, space strategy is, to ten, is intended to take a wholesome, a fulsome look at parks across um, across the city, neighborhood <coughs> parks, district parks. Um, to provide a more comprehensive plan. So an adequate focus would be placed on district parks as well. That would be separate from just the neighborhood parks. That's correct. Okay, excellent. Um, there was uh, some works that were still uh, planned, but I don't think it's been addressed, but the top code for the, um, the parking lot. Um, has that been done? Uh, I don't recall seeing that. It was deferred in past years because of some obviously funding constraints and doing the remediation. So that was, it was deferred. Um, again, the, uh, I think that was the original base code and additional layers were still required to be put on and this is a number of years that's been deferred if it hasn't been addressed. Ms. McGoldrick? Uh, that is correct. That still is an outstanding item to be completed. Uh, as part of the issue, pay, uh, okay, so as Councilor I'm gonna get you to queue back in if you wanna ask more questions. You got a few people in the queue here. Okay. Sure. Okay, Councilor Johnson. Yes, thank you. Uh, through you, my question is from uh, C169. Oh, oh. You're, you're good. Yeah. So sorry about that. Okay. Newbie. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> my question is from uh, C169 with regards to the urban forest strategy. And I'm wondering if you can um, uh, give me an idea of how this money kind of separates between um, the uh, um, public uh, f um, tree canopy and the private tree canopy. I'm having, um, I'm having questions from uh, residents um, who are doing a really good job of, of taking care of the tree canopy which is uh, on their private land. And um, they just like to see kind of how that money um, uh, is distributed. And then I have, probably have a follow-up question. 
So through you, Mr. Chair, um, thank you for the question. It helps clarify a point that we discussed at the operating budget. Um, of the, the money that you see, the, the dollar sums in the capital plan, there's only 40,000 of that capital dollars which we would be planning to put in towards that, uh, proposing to put into that, that, pub, that private partnerships um, uh, program uh, with, with REAP, and we will be bringing back an issue paper um, on that very shortly. Um, the residual part of that capital monies is all to be spent on, um, on public lands. Uh, thank you. So then with regards to that issue paper, is there, um, could you include then some information on whether or not um, we could look at doing a, um, some kind of a tax credit for people that uh, can show to us that they are um, uh, having their trees regularly pruned, on their, uh, on their private property, kind of taking care of that, that tree canopy. Is that something that can be added? Ms. McGoldrick. Uh, so through you, Chair Davey, um, th that will require a substantial amount of analysis, so we wouldn't be able to include that in, in the issue paper. What I can say, and what I've seen other municipalities do, is offer a stormwater credit associated with uh, private tree canopy. That is something we could take back and look at as part of uh, the sustainable urban forest strategy um, implementation to do some additional analysis associated with that, but we certainly wouldn't be able to provide that um, within the next, before final budget day. And, and that's okay. I'm not sure when I can ask for an issue paper and, and kind of how I go about it. But that's kind of what I was thinking was uh, uh, very similar to what we do with stormwater credits, um, if there's something that we can do along that line. So I can wait for that. So thank you so much. Very good. Uh, Councillor Marsh. Uh, thanks. I have a question about uh, the last page that we're looking at, C-172, cemeteries. Um, I don't see any line item for a renovation to our newly acquired uh, building uh, as part of cemeteries. And I'm just wondering if that's because this was prepared long before it was finalized and if we're going to see it be added to the 10-year capital forecast for future years. Through you, Mr. Jay, you're spot on. Um, a large amount of the work preparing this was done well in advance of us knowing whether we were going to have that building. So that will be something you will see coming to, before you in the next, next few months. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Before we start for a second round, I, I can't let the uh, Iron Horse Trail lighting issue go. Uh, so easily, I guess I want to ask staff the question, how common is it for us to plan on funding that isn't 100% um, certain that we're going to get? So my question is, essentially is, what, what's happened here with the Iron Horse Trail lighting is we've created an expectation in the community. Um, I, see the, I see the government that pulled the funding, there's, there's been no public coverage of it whatsoever, there's been no backlash to them whatsoever, and then the municipal government steps in and picks up a significant tab, $700,000. So how can we protect ourselves from publicizing things like this, creating this expectation in the future. Mr. Reedman. Through the chair, um, so at the time there was a commitment from the previous government, um, but there was a caution that um, we still did need to consult with even the previous government to ensure that that funding was available. So there was a cautionary bu budget item added about that lighting in the previous year's budget. So it was never listed as a certainty, but, but there was a caveat that um, we were looking to use that, that funding towards that lighting. So was there ever consideration by staff that maybe we go back to the drawing board or this comes off of the um, off of the budget, at least for a period of time, until such time as we could have otherwise appropriately built it into our capital forecast? Ms. McGoldrick? Uh, so through you, Chair Davey, uh, that, that is always a consideration, but given the feedback we received through the Iron Horse Trail master plan work, uh, there was significant support for lighting the full extent of the trail. Um, and in addition um, to phase lighting to after the upgrades to the trail would be much more disruptive and, and costly. And so the thought being if lighting um, is going in at any time, it, it makes sense to do that at the same time as the trail reconstruction. Okay. Was this, do we approve this last budget? 
Like, was this was this part of was the program in place for the last budget or not? Uh, so, through you, Chair Dave, or in response to that, uh, yes, this was brought forward as an issue paper in the last in the 2018 budget. Okay. So, going forward, wouldn't it be? Uh, I'm just. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with staff offline. And to be clear, I, this is something that needs to be done. I, I don't doubt that. I'm just deeply frustrated and annoyed that it, the funding gets pulled and then we have to step in and do it and we don't necessarily, uh, the, the, the bodies that pulled it don't necessarily get punished and then we actually do end up getting punished for having to fund something that we might not have actually ever put in our forecast in the first place, certainly not this soon. So again, I can't let it go without commenting on it, and it's obviously, obviously not our staff's fault, it's the municipality's fault, but it's something that uh, I think going forward, if we can find a way to not promise these sorts of uh, grants to the community until we know 100% certain that we're going to get them would probably be more prudent. Okay, going for a second round, Councillor Gazzola. Watch where you're going there, because those are the questions that I've been asking. <laughs> okay, page C91. The cenotaph, it says we've added 100,000 to address the expanded scope. Well, what is that? What, what have we changed there? And uh, So through you, Mr. Chair, uh, when we went out to public consultation, uh, the feedback we had through public consultation was very strongly about uh, uh, a couple of additional things, and, and two of those, those elements were uh, additional trees and additional lighting and the installation of lighting. That's what this addresses. So somebody in the public stated they want that, and that's that's where it is here. Councilor Marsh, do you have some additional? It's just my understanding that the region is uh, planning to redo uh, Weber Street along that uh, right uh, near the cenotaph, and so uh, it was um, it was the the timing was right to uh, to do it around the same time. That's my, uh, that was my understanding. Well, here I thought wrong street. I know it's another I block away. It maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, it's, uh, um, maybe I'll let staff answer. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they in came. your defense, staff hadn't clicked in yet to answer the question. Yeah, so. no, there, we okay, came back here. Do you have some clarity on this? Yeah, maybe I can provide some clarity. There, there was <laughs> a comprehensive consultation, and we heard from the Legion and others around uh, essentially what was a fairly bare bones um, updating of the of the facility and I think this doesn't even get to a, a number of the things that the community was asking for and and to be frank we're hoping that we may actually be able to still find some private donors to deal with the other pieces yeah I'm not against motherhood and apple pie okay yeah. I'm, no, no, I don't. I'm just <laughs> answer this question. is this is the first I've seen of it I haven't seen any reports a public meeting that this has come back. I know last year we did a whole topic on Queen Street revitalization. Okay, and I wondered is that tied into that? Where we're where we're gonna do all sorts of things on Queen Street now. That that's my is and I wondered is it tied into that? And now I'm hearing no it's from a public meeting. So I'm just want, wondering what it is. We're, we're approving it. We should have some idea what it is. So to you, Mr. Chair, I will make one quick comment on that Please. one. Although the two projects are distinct and separate, um, we are trying to link the tendering and the consultation, the tendering and the work together to save on costs around staging and so on and so forth. So they are two separate projects, but we are trying to run them in parallel with each other. For some additional savings, very good. Uh, Councillor Singh. Yeah, so continuing on with McKenna Park, so what I was about to ask at that point was uh, an issue paper requesting to see how the uh, the parking lot could be, um, the additional base could be surfacing again. As I was saying, that is it is starting to show wear, and in previous years we've talked um, that the longer it waits to have that additional work, uh, it will deteriorate and in the long run adding uh, increased costs. So what that amount would be to do that additional work to the, uh, the parking lot, and if it could, those monies could be found through some capital closeout. Okay, did staff want to respond to that or just no? Fine, good, okay. Uh, Councillor Gazzola, you're back in the queue. Yeah, I, just, I have one final request, a, a question. Uh, the last, uh, the last uh, issue paper is, uh, 
a list of account balances as that I'm not sure what date. I'm just I'm, I'm hoping that we will get a, a list as of the end of December. It doesn't have to be uh, to the extreme that that list is. Just a complete list that I would imagine is a printout from your your system. So there's there's no work involved. It's just. But Mr. Hagee? <laughs> Through the chair, there's not no work, but uh, we have it in a format where we can get it fairly quickly. Uh, it's as of mid-November, so the balances will come down a bit, maybe not as significant as some other years when we printed in September. But can yes. I, so I just would like to see if we can get it. Uh, yes, so we I, could. I'm hoping there isn't that much work involved, but it, because it, it would, comes right off of your system, does it not? Uh, I wish that were true, but it's not. Hey, come uh, on, now. you got this twenty million dollar SAP system. <laughs> so it's a, it's not a, a, a overly significant amount of work to produce it in this format. Thank, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Galloway Lock. Mine's just kind of a final comment. Is that is now the time? There for now would be a good time. Yeah, there's no one else in the queue. <laughs> I was still looking for an answer, so I was hoping there was other people in the queue, but. Um, As I was going through the issue papers, uh, and I've already made this point once today with regards to the City Hall outdoor spaces, but in, in the past when asking for funding for various projects, we were never able to come up with funding. And within this budget alone, I've picked three things that have been added, and it equals to over $10 million. We have $8.5 million for the City Hall open spaces, we have a million for the cycling infrastructure, and we have 700,000 for the, um, oh, what's that? Iron Horse Trail. I wrote down tax, which was just supposed to be tax capital, so I forgot, <laughs> for the Iron Horse Trail. And when you look at it in that broader context, it, it really starts um, to be concerning. I understand that some of these are council priorities, but there also has to be an opportunity for council to look at um, all of the priorities that we've put in front and make that decision on, on where funding goes and if, if it goes there. I know that we'll have some opportunity th to do that at final budget, but it is definitely concerning that we are, at, with three projects, um, increasing spending at the rate of $10 million. And so I just wanted to uh, make that comment that it's, uh, that's concerning to me. Uh, I, I actually I wouldn't mind following up that comment. I, I agree to a certain extent. I think the problem it's a tricky sort of a thing I think for staff to navigate and I think I'm thinking some of it was uh, it's an election year and they had to put a budget together quickly not necessarily knowing what the makeup of council was going to be. Having said that I going back to that whole creating expectation issue and I'm not sure how we saw this exactly but um, the problem is once something is in the budget, that expectation is there, and then obviously taking it out creates controversy. So if there was a way uh, going forward that we could sort of address this in a more, you know, let the council set the um, priorities more directly, if there is additional dollars or if staffing say can pull together additional dollars, I would agree. I think that's where you're going essentially, correct? So uh, I see have you back in the queue, yeah, Councilor. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of where I'm going, but... Um, we've we've had to defer projects before. Um, I'm not saying now is necessarily the time to do it, but we've deferred. Uh, I'm just going to use Southwest because that's what I'm the expert on. Um, we had when I first started, we had the South District Park, which is now Schlegel Park, completed by 2018. It's not even open yet, and that's completed with an arena, with a swimming pool, with sports fields, you know, all complete, all done. And so um, I understand some of that has to do with DCs and how the DCs are in deficit, but there's certain projects that just continue to fall off the table and we get these other projects forward and we find $10 million. Margaret Avenue Bridge, we had to do it, right? Like we had to do 44 Gockle Street, we had to do it. Um, I get that, but at the end of the day, we also need to support growing areas of the city uh, in making sure that uh, they're getting the funding that they require. Because it's really hard to tell 
residents who are the mostly the ones paying the de development charges so are your development charges are going to a downtown library or going to other places as opposed to um, anywhere in their community uh, and I know it's not area rated and I understand all that but it's just it's um, becoming frustrating I guess is what I'm trying to say so thanks for listening to me okay no thank you for that uh, so that concludes capital budget. Now I guess we're going to do the same thing we did operating here. We will look over the issue papers that have been requested, uh, take any questions or comments on them or clarity, and to approve that. And then we're done for the day, I believe. Oh, that's right. We do have to go back into special counsel. So anyone have any questions about what we see before us on your screens? I'm not seeing anyone queue in. Um, Councillor Singh. Not about this, but something else before we uh, finish and go into special counsel. Uh, just a conflict I wanted to note out oh, before uh, we take a final vote. For? In uh, uh, road resurfacing. Is, uh, oh, I see. Yeah, we should take that now then, I think. Now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, um, so it had a number of conflicts with uh, either property that uh, either I or a family member owns uh, and some road resurfacing along the, those properties, uh, C-132 so, so Sterling Mauser, C-133 4th Avenue, C-135 2nd Avenue, C-142 Franklin, and C-142 Connaught. Okay, conflict noted. Uh, we're not voting on this. You'll have to declare the conflict again a final budget to the exclusion, right? So, uh, okay, so can I get a mover for these items? Moved by Councillor Ioannidis. Uh, any questions or comments? Not seeing any. I think what we have before here, here is reasonable. Uh, those in favor? And uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Gazzoli, you're in favor? Yes, okay, that carries unanimously. Very good. Uh, that concludes uh, capital budget. We're I guess if, you can, if you're not really counting public input as a difficult day, it's we're two thirds done. Uh, we'll switch over to special counsel in about two minutes. Okay. No. Oh. Okay. No recorded votes. It's been deemed. Mayor Vibanovich. So um, we just need a motion to um, ratify what's coming out of operating and capital. Finance Committee, uh, moved by Councillor Davey, seconded by Councillor Singh, with the conflicts noted earlier. Um, so, yeah, because we're not dealing with any of those specifics. It's only requests for information. Yep. Um, all those in favour? Opposed? That's carried. And all, and all of this really happened before our three readings of the bylaw, which we did earlier, and, uh, and so on. Um, so motion to adjourn, we already did that earlier, so that's done. So the only other issue um, that I said we needed to touch base on, um, right now we have council on January, on January the 28th, um, but the, and as well as our strat session for the strategic plan. The, uh, we need to move the strat session because um, BCMC, which was scheduled for the 25th, has been, um, has been moved um, because of availability of federal leaders um, to the 28th. Um, and so I'm cognizant of a couple things. Uh, we have final budget on Thursday that day. And after that, there are a number of people who I know are at various points in February um, taking chunks of time away. So my suggestion would be, and in having our EAs look at the schedules, um, my suggestion would be that we actually move both the strat session um, and the council meeting so that you don't need to come in for Monday because it's a very light uh, committee agenda next Monday, is that we do both of those on the, on the 29th. Um, in the afternoon, um, and so we're we're looking at um, two time frames: either 
130 to 4 or 330 to 6. Um, and staff's checking your calendars. That those weren't problems. I think there was one who had an external committee meeting for one of the boards that we sit on, but that was about it. Um, is that a problem for anybody? 330 to 6? Okay. On the Tuesday. So you'd have the Monday off, but we would do it on the Tuesday. There's nobody in the queue to speak to it, so. You're okay with that? Sorry? Which Thursday? Thursday's final budget. Why is that? Sorry, what's the concern? Could you, if you could uh, click in, Councillor Chapman, you can. Kind of okay. off topic because um, Tuesday would be fine. I've got the Grand River, River Hospital Board meeting, so I just miss it. But final budget day on the Thursday is a big problem for me. Okay, from the previous, because you didn't bring that up, or was that scheduled before you got on? I don't know. It's in my book. Okay, it was. It's been it. scheduled from before. Yeah. When do you teach? Well, I don't teach till four o'clock in the afternoon, but I use the day to. It's the only day of the week for the next four months that what does not work for me. So, the, the problem that we have is. The budget day was originally going to be that following Monday, but council moved it to the Thursday because we're dealing with um, people who are away. Um, so I don't know that we can move it back. We we'll, won't schedule anything else on the Thursday, but if you're not teaching till four, can well, you'll have Monday all day to prep now. <laughs> so that'll that'll work. So Monday the 28th, you would, you'd be off then. No strat session, and council really looks like it's going to should be, I mean, there's three things on the only committee agenda on the 21st. It's... So it would just be a to 6 is what's being proposed. Strat session and, and, and the council meeting. Somebody will magically change it in your calendars. Everyone's okay with that? Um, actually, do you, do you need, Madam Clerk, I know we're kind of going backwards a bit, but you'd need a motion for that, right? I think to change the schedule. So can we add this item as a, somebody want to move that? That we add, uh, that we waive notice and add this item. Sure. Okay. Moved by Councillor Davies, second by Councillor Galloway Sealock. All those in favor, opposed. That's carried. Somebody want to move the hut? We um, go to three thirty to six for council and um, and special council. Uh, Councillor Galloway Sealock, Councillor Ioannidis. All those. Oh, Councillor Schneider. Oh, all those in favor, <laughs> opposed. That's carried. And again, we've backtracked it all and we've done this. No, it, it would be at, like earlier, so we'd be done everything by six. It was only two hours set aside for the strategic plan. But staff have only had two hours. Okay, good. And, and don't forget we have tours later this week. S staff have organized the tour for everybody. Well, it's, it's a... It's a regularly scheduled council meeting.
Because the calendar is approved by council, I guess. so that's well, why we so needed to. Make yeah, 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 yeah. But we needed to officially move it. That's like the actual date and time. From the Monday to the Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. So we can figure out. That I didn't say which one will be at three thirty and which one will be at five thirty. I think we can. Move. The strat will be it. You're wondering what meeting will be at what time? Yeah. The strat will be first. Probably. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be better. <laughs>